And so here I am, just readying to prepare for coding and testing stuff. Um, it's been quite the adventure getting this far. Like, you've heard of Homer and the Odyssey. You've heard... I don't even know what you've heard, but... Um, this... The story puts all of those to shame. Oh, great! It's failed. Um, that was... unexpected. Okay, so... what failed? Just that a command timed out? No, do it again. I don't accept this. Try again. Don't time out on me so fast. So, yeah. Um, at my brother's suggestion, we're trying every possible technology here. Um, so, we've made attempts to use Docker, Vagrant, Chef. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, we're using VirtualBox. I've tried various virtualization mechanisms, um, and underneath all of this, um, well, part of using Chef is that you're expected to use recipe files, except in cases where people's existing recipes don't meet your existing needs, um, such as as the case here. So. I'm going above and beyond all that. Uh, I'm writing my own shell scripts and inline commands and um, bash files and such. Um, and creating all the appropriate user accounts and permissions and such under my VirtualBox instance. And in turn, once the VirtualBox instance is installed and we've used apt with or apt-get with the appropriate providers defined to go obtain the software development packages and we install things like Java from Oracle and not from OpenJDK. We install things like um, oh what was it? It wasn't SBT, it was some other library Oh yeah, NPM and Node.js, and just getting the right versions of all of these from the appropriate providers. Um, and then once all those tools are installed, um, working my way through some of the um, challenges that there are with the Leechess deployment script. So. You have to really carefully read the instructions. It's been a very thorough test in RTFM. Um, and I've tried, I've done my best effort not to beg in the IRC channel and to do my due diligence to answer these questions where I am able. And unfortunately, there's just so many moving parts that it's difficult to do that. Um, but yeah, I finally figured out how to obtain all these tools and the correct versions from the right providers and install them in the correct locations on the file space uh, such that everybody has the appropriate permissions for such things. Um, ensuring that uh, I still need to go back and secure my MongoDB instance. Somehow that was easier to do under CentOS than it is under Ubuntu. Um, oh yeah, by the way, we're switching uh, the Linux installation on the home server from uh, an enterprise uh, deployment architecture or enterprise uh, operating system CentOS, which is just a derivative of Red Hat, now we've moved into Ubuntu, which, sure, it's got newer drivers, but it's bleeding edge everything. 
and it just means that things are that much more difficult to figure out. But, on the bright side, you'll always have the latest um, code available, except in cases where it's not kept up to date, and you have to go get it yourself. Um, as was a couple things here, like NPM, I had to go get that myself, and because I get NPM by myself, I had to also write my own installer for Gulp using NPM. Um, but that's okay. So yeah, we got all the tools installed. Rather, that's what we're looking at over here and watching it install everything. Um, okay, yeah, it successfully made it through installing all the libraries. Oh, as it did last time. And this time it's still executing the, um, well, we'll get through, we'll get there. I'll show you. So, yeah, got through step one successfully. And earlier today I had gotten through this whole procedure and then discovered that I had the wrong database installed and basically had to start over. That was quite the joy. Um, but no worries. So we got this, we, we can see, the, well, you might not be able to read it, but this was done successfully. Um, this is done successfully, changing directory to the checked out project. This is the command that it issued at the moment. Uh, timed out last time it tried to do this, just because there's so much to download. And unfortunately, uh, Vagrant doesn't respect the fact, or maybe it's Chef running under Vagrant, I'm not sure. One of the two doesn't respect the fact that this takes a long freaking time to download all the sounds and images, both 2D and 3D and styles and other libraries and such that get pulled in. Like we're, this pulls in all the sub projects or sub modules that are necessary for a LeechS deployment. And that's a lot of a lot of code. Um, so this is where a few minutes ago I, I was just in utter disbelief that I got the error message um, uh, just from the tools I'm using to do the deployment. But yeah, earlier today I've gone through all this successfully and now I had to start over using the correct Mongo database. Um, which I still need to figure out how to secure properly. But this is my development box. I'm not too worried because I'm not keeping user sensitive private information in that database right now. I can always go back and secure it or if necessary go through this whole process an additional time to ensure that I have a secure box. Um, but yeah, this is the step that's being executed. Next, once you've downloaded all of the submodules, then you need to go build every one of these uh, dependent projects. Um, and once they're all built, then you can build the main project. And once that successfully builds, um, you can do this, which is useful for, well, you install Gulp. Gulp is used in turn to download um, code that's uh, compiled through Google Clojure to produce the JavaScript and the assets for the front end. I'm not sure to what extent JavaScripts and uh, their root sources and such are downloaded through Gulp, but I know that this UI build will go uh, for each sub-project and try to produce all the assets and scripts that are needed for visualization of the uh, for the web pages and the reason I understand that is because earlier today I was doing testing and I was in a position where this command here would not work because I was using the wrong version of NPM and Node.js um, so uh, one second okay yeah, it's on um, so yeah, after much consternation, I, looking through log files and reading documentation, it occurred to me 
But the reason this UI step was failing, eh, um, even for simple things like building the scripts and the assets for the lobby, is because I had failed to correctly read the instructions, um, and I had assumed that uh, the scripts, uh, ever so kindly provided by another person that you don't know, who I will not name here, um, but they provided me some basic scripts just to get started with um, developing and deploying using uh, these mechanisms. They had given me scripts which installed the wrong NPM version, some 1.4 and I need at least 2.1 um, and that's what was causing UI build to fail because it... wow okay anyhow that's what caused the UI build to fail because I was unable to obtain the sources that were necessary for um, building all the submodule assets um, and yeah, I think all this ran successfully earlier today, and I've got scripts that'll modify uh, these application.conf and such. Um, the other thing I was struggling with today is uh, disabling the CAPTCHA on various uh, places throughout uh, the login form and such. I eventually got it figured out and um, found some configuration bugs in my own code where I had the wrong path names and um, was not able to get at my assets folder. Um, figured out that's because this part of uh, my Nginx uh, reverse proxy server I failed to set up correctly because I created a user called Leela which in turn has a directory called Leela. Um, and somehow through the various revisions that I brought my configurations through, uh, one of the two Leelas got lost and not re-added, and I thought I'd re-added it, but didn't. Uh, but yeah, this here is used for defining when a incoming HTTP request comes in, where do we direct it to, if it comes in on port 80, then we redirect, and it comes in with the, one of these names, which I'm actually using a different name because I want to publicly expose my instance. Um, but yeah, if it comes in with one of these names, then depending on the start of the path or the route, it'll um, redirect the request either to a static directory or um, to the Leela web server um, uh, either at its uh, root path or at its AI path. And, uh, I assume that on the actual production server this is much more complicated but this works for development. Um, so yeah, I had all this in place, but just with some typos in there, I was able to fix all that through my testing earlier today. It's a bummer I had to start over, because uh, I had the wrong MongoDB, but you live and you learn. Um, yeah. So, what else? Um... Yeah, I've got all my appropriate configuration variables or environment variables set up in my user profile. Unfortunately, the chef recipes don't set those up properly, so I have to manually set those up. Um, also, if I'm doing any work with uh, editing files and wanting to use, uh, what is it? wanting to use uh, git in any appropriate in any useful manner I need to uh, copy over things like my username and um, my email address uh, some minor configuration things they have to go into my uh, git settings 
And while I'm at it, there's no harm, and it's probably a good idea that I copy over my RSA keys uh, into this box just so I'm able to uh, transact with the GitHub server. Um, and yeah, I think I've gone through all of these errors at one point or another today. And yeah, in fact, I did. In addition to many others. Um, and thank goodness this is here. This is very helpful. Uh, clearly, Leechess developers understand just how complicated this whole arrangement is. Oh yeah, I encountered all three of these. I encountered this one. Um, I didn't actually get any timeouts, but that's because I've properly configured my uh, SPT compile commands to use the proper arguments. This fix is actually out of date um, on account of... what is it? On account of... they actually patched this. If you look at uh, the issue, they say that they're not using this particular... they're not changing the value of SBT options inside the scope anymore. And so your original options will be respected. Or, I'm sorry, of Java options. It's to basically cut down the script and what it used to do to make it a lot more manageable. And kudos to them for doing it. Um, this is also very helpful is that if I ever had to update the code, this is these are the steps you'd go through to address common problems. And I did encounter all that today, again because people, developers kept pushing changes to um, the master development branch and I was kept um, every time my scripts to set up the environment would um, try to resolve all my issues, they would also detect, that, oh by the way, that upstream repository has been updated, we better pull down all the changes. And, well, that's cool. Um, it does make debugging a little bit trickier. Uh, so, I've been rambling here this entire time. Um, how far have we gotten here? Let's take a look. Uh, let's take a look. Where's the command starting? Where did it start? Way up here somewhere. Okay, so we installed Java. Set Java home. Um, this is installing Nginx, reverse proxy server that takes incoming requests from a multitude of IP addresses and directs them to a single server, and takes requests for or responses from that server and split multiplexes them back out. Um, what else? Oh, updated the hosts file, it's good. Um, export properties like Java opts and SBT opts that are necessary for compilation. It's all good. Um, set all the user properties, create all the users and home directories, and um, looks like it installed MongoDB. That's a huge relief if that actually did... Oh, okay, yeah, it did install MongoDB, define it as a service, enable the service on restart, and start the MongoDB service. So that's good. All that's doing well, so hopefully I have an accessible database. Here we're defining the provider for... Um, for Node.js. Uh, we're going out to the Node Source server and overriding our apt-get settings for um, what's going to provide um, Node.js for us. And so uh, now we're getting the official development branch as opposed to some, to some deprecated, nobody supporting it branch that's going along, um, that's being maintained under Ubuntu community standards. Um, Ubuntu standards are just so strict that it's very difficult for such a rapidly moving project 
which has gone through releases four and five recently. Uh, it's difficult for them in Ubuntu to try to keep up with this kind of rapid development. Um, especially because there's really no incentive for developers to try to maintain Ubuntu packages and cross-platform um, capable packages. So Node Source or Node.js is just doing their own thing and that just means it's a little trickier for me using that with Vagrant and Chef to uh, ensure I'm getting the right thing. Uh, but yeah, I set up this is using the correct provider. It'll get me the correct version of Node.js and NPM, which in turn means that um, when I go to download and compile dependencies, um, that'll draw from not only from the correct sources and be able to parse all the directives that are defined in the Leechess project and sub-projects, um, but also um, it'll be able to compile said resources. It's, there's just a lot of moving pieces here. Um, so yeah, we've got NPM and we've got all the dependencies that were listed up here, way up here in step one. Here we're getting some of the more advanced things like closure, a Z shell, SBT, and such. Um, things that are software development tools as opposed to um, applications themselves. Applications like a database, um, which I've already installed before this point. And just for fun, for kicks, I've installed SL, the best command of them all. Um, and so now where have we left off here? Oh, so we've, um, I guess, successfully downloaded, um, we've successfully gotten through this step of getting all the sub-projects or sub-modules needed for Leela. So all the assets and colors and pieces and shapes and styles and whatever. I've got all that downloaded here and now we're executing step four. Which is what this is saying here. Alright, so yes, uh, to Dan Dan's point, yeah, um, Stockfish coding, I hope, involves variant-enabled engines. Um, so those who have been paying attention on Lee Chess know that we've got uh, Stockfish that can play normal chess, it can play King of the Hill, and it can play 3-check. And I'm trying to add on to that two more variants, um, Atomic and Horde Chess. Um, in my opinion, it's all been working. I've been testing it. It all looks perfectly fine and peachy to me. Um, but it's been a while since I've pulled in uh, Stockfish's official changes. And they've been making many changes leading up to the TCEC. I don't remember what it stands for. Um, but basically an international chess computer competition. Um, and so uh, I'm intending to pull in all those changes and test that I've successfully pulled them in, but I can't do all that until I've got a test environment set up. And so I'm using LeeChess as my test environment and it's just taken forever to set it up. <laughs> but I'm learning a lot along the way, perhaps about things I don't need to know but things are still maybe interesting in some way or shape or form. Yeah. I mean, if you want, you could go just search GitHub, look for Stockfish, and see that there is a project out there, and I've been publishing all my code, and if you um, feel ever so motivated, feel free to try to download and compile it on your own. But uh, I honestly don't know how to compile it for a Windows platform. Um, 
but I'm sure some motivated people will figure that sort of thing out. Um, all this runs under Linux anyway, so I've never really been motivated to try to make that work for Windows. Um, but I know it somehow works. You just have to be able to compile it. Uh, just with all the development I've been doing to try to improve Stockfish, I've never really focused on the actual release mechanisms for it. But yeah, if people cared, and if they really are interested in it, feel free to download the code, look at it, ask your friend to help you compile it or something. Or just learn Linux. Yeah, that can't be hard. <laughs> um, you know, I wish I had the time to make a laser chess engine. I would very much like to see that. Um, you'll note that with that game, I didn't go down the route of making an engine. I've just so far focused on trying to enable the game to work via Twitch. And the hope and the dream is that, you know, if I just keep it running long enough, maybe somebody who watches the channel will feel so inspired to try to make a bot for, like, how to intelligently play the game. But it's a difficult challenge, and not one, that, not one that's on my immediate horizon. Um, yeah, you could probably compile Stockfish and under Sigwin somehow. Again, I'm not saying that would work, but whatever. <laughs> Hey, if it's the dream, either I'm going to find a way to make this work, or somebody else is going to find a way to, like, install VirtualBox or some other thing on their PC, get Linux running under it, and just run and test the Stockfish, and certify that it works. Because, like, for many months, I've been saying that it works just fine on my computer. Um... But other people have been testing it with much different results than what I've been seeing. So that does suggest that something's wrong, but I've been completely stumped as to how to duplicate their issues. So that's why I've actually turned to uh, um, installing uh, Leeches here on my server. The plan is that I'm going to expose the server, anybody can log in and play against it, and once there's enough people competing against it and there's a general belief that it does work, then hopefully the leeches, I don't know what you'll say, administrators, developers, managers, whatever term you want to use, hopefully they will also agree that it works or they can explain to me why they think it doesn't. Um, but I'm of the opinion it works. It works great for me. Um, but, I don't know, I tend to be optimistic about what works, and, um, I don't know, that's just how, uh, on the job I've been kind of trained to be optimistic about these things. Um, without going too deep into that, uh, I just, like, it's very important to be able to declare success at some point. And sure, part of that is ensuring that you've actually done adequate testing and you know it works. But another part of that is not taking a nihilistic view that unless it's perfect, um, it doesn't work. You want to avoid that perspective, and you want to celebrate when things do work, and um, uh, I'm not sure what else to say on that front, other than if there are bugs discovered, it's not too hard to address bugs most of the time if you understand your original development and you understand the code that you're working with. Discovering the bugs is often much more difficult than fixing them. Um, well, not uh, not to say that it's always that way, but I'd say maybe it's 50-50. Half the time it's difficult to find a bug, 
and half the time it's difficult to fix a bug. Um, and the numbers might not be exactly right, but I think it's roughly somewhere there. Um, and so with that said, the way to get the most value is to re release as much as you can, ensure that it works to some minimal standard, and if people discover bugs, just address the bugs as they come up, and they'll work better and better, and just get as much testing done with a small user base as you can. And then once you've done that testing and things seem to work, then promote it to a larger audience. Okay, so I've been rambling here. People have been talking. Um, yeah, I will expose um, this server so people can play against my engine. Because I'm very interested in seeing people try to defeat it. Um, and if they do successfully defeat it, I can make it stronger. Um, also, uh, one thing I want to work on is making the AI levels more consistent. Um, you'll notice that like level 1 AI occasionally plays very strong moves and very terrible moves. And I don't think I think that's a little too not sane as compared to what a human would do. And if you go up the levels, you'll see that like level 3 and level 4 AI are still kind of configured that way where they'll make atrocious blunders sometimes, and other times they'll exploit uh, tactics that no human would ever reasonably conceive of. Um, and sometimes they'll just miss things that a human player would easily see. And I just want to try to strike a balance there. Uh, and I have some ideas as to how to improve that. Unfortunately, I've just been in this... with my server been down... or in various states of not working for the last month-ish, uh, it's been difficult to do development. And so, I'm trying to get things back up and rolling. Um, and boy, are there a lot of moving parts. <laughs> um, sure, yeah, of course, yeah. Low-rated players can find GM-level things, but it is rare. Um, but one thing that I find comedic, in a sense, uh, and this is not really related to my main point, but if you try to checkmate Stockfish, like, it will always avoid Maiden 1, and almost always avoid Maiden 2 and Maiden 3 and such. If you give it any way out of a mating sequence, it almost always finds it. But until that point in the game, like, lower AI levels play pretty haphazardly. Um, but as soon as the mate threat becomes evident on the board, the difficulty level ramps up way beyond expert. It, it's infuriating to me when I fail to checkmate it. It's hilarious, but... Uh, Stockfish is quite tenacious in those situations. And that's not the focus of what I'm going to try to fix. Um, because there are even more glaring defects that are actual real problems. But, um, that would be a nice thing to get addressed. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, humans miss, uh, mate and one a lot. Yeah, absolutely, no question. So, okay, at this point we see that it's built all the dependencies, it's successfully compiled the LeeChess server, um, as shown here it says it ran successfully, and unfortunately this output's not very verbose, you can't see all the hundreds of things that are going on. Um, 
this step in particular where it built all the, the sub modules or all the sub projects are is a bit um, amazing. Uh, this corresponds to roughly a thousand commands um, getting issued because there's over a dozen dependent projects or uh, dependency projects um, that Leechess or Leela needs to compile. So getting all these to compile is no easy feat. Um, yeah, the actual Leechess compile is pretty relatively simple. Uh, let's see, how long did this take? So, oh, also I'm operating apparently in GMT time zone because I'm just struggling to configure uh, basic things like time zone with these virtual machines. But okay, this took from 355 to 409. So that took uh, 14 minutes. The next step took from 409 to 409, this 12 seconds. Um, so yeah, this building all the dependency submodules is... Uh, I'm quite impressed that it worked, but in another sense I'm not that impressed because I got that working earlier today, and that should work, given all the lengths I went through to get this to work. Um, you know, I don't know what Stockfish plays in response to opening moves. I do intend to eventually have a book that it can play with, or that it's just able to adapt and learn from its own games. Um, that would be the ideal way to go. Uh, to date, I have not... I don't know. It's not been this opening book software I've been using. It hasn't been the most reliable thing ever. It has worked, um, but uh, it's the way in which it worked has been kind of dubious. And even though it has proven its value through testing, um, the amount of value add, I don't know. It, in my opinion, there's a great value add in having it simulate the opening moves that a human player would play, because this helps people train for playing against other human opponents. Um, apparently, that's not such an important thing. I don't know why not, but people are perfectly content and happy if it plays the same two or three opening moves um, against any first move or against any second move. People are content seeing it do the same thing every game, I guess. Or mostly the same thing. Um, I would have liked to see more variety. I would have liked to see more consistency and see it play opening moves without thinking. And it's just play them out of a book instead of spending a few seconds thinking about it, but um, despite both the improvement in variety of opening play and improvement in terms of CPU cycles saved and ultimately server costs saved, um, it hasn't been uh, saving as much in costs as they would like to save. So. Uh, they backed it out for now. I'll have a chance to go back and see if I can um, improve the opening book module. And um, I think I can. It's just going to take some time. Get it to work with an absolutely enormous opening book. So, uh, like, when it's been playing against me, it's been playing the first ten moves without even thinking. But, um, yeah, I, I'm not sure... Um, there's a lot of code changes I've made to get it to do that, and I haven't fully tested it yet. And there might still be some more coding to go. And once I've tested that it all works for standard chess, then I need to go back and retest it for variants and see if it works at all for variants. And if not, figure out what to do. 
Um, yeah, I'm not using Vaslov. Um, honestly, I'm just downloading PGN from fixgames.org and just taking a collection of, um, of games that were played with a given variant and just making a book out of it. Um, although I think I did get another data source from, um, I forget from who. Uh, if I remember right, I did get such a PGN file that contained Atomic Games. I'll have to recheck my notes and see where it ended up. Um, but I think it, I might have, and this seems really confusing, but I thought that I got some subset of Atomic Games that were actually played on Lee Chess. But I could be completely making that up. And I'm not sure that it adds any value to say that, because, like, who's to say that Atomic Games on Lee Chess are any better or worse than Atomic Games on a different server? And Fix Games allows you to download PGNs, and it's really awesome like that. And Lee Chess allows you to download all your games, um, also allows you to download select games, but doesn't have a convenient way for doing relational database queries and pulling down um, a subset of games across a wide variety of players and dates and times. Um, Lee Chess doesn't use a relational database, eh, at least not yet. I think somebody wrote a plugin to try to convert Lee Chess's data into any database form. Uh, I don't remember where on GitHub that's located, but I would love to see that in action. Um, although, even longer term, I would like to see um, games stored not in Lee Chess's format or maybe still in that format, but indexed um, using something like um, Sean's Chess Information Database, um, SCIDB, which is which they're still developing, uh, making really good progress with, um, and uh, it supports all kinds of awesome search features, again, which are still under development, but It'd be awesome to be able to search for, look for positions that resemble this position. And they have this kind of pawn structure where one player's castle, the other has his king somewhere in this general vicinity, and the material imbalance is something like this, and they have opposite color bishops, and there's all kinds of cool things you could do with chess query language. And I would like to see a way to convert um, large sets of data into something easily searchable. But that's an enormous undertaking. Um, so I don't know when that would happen. Um, yeah, Atomic Games on Fix uh, are pretty excellent. Um, I don't know about the top players, I can't really speak to that, but I know I've seen many excellent games of Atomic Chess on Fix, and it seems that many of the Atomic games that I watch on Lee Chess um, tend to not be between top players, but tend just to be between people who are playing Bullet Atomic, which is fun and well and good, but it's not serious Atomic Chess. Yeah, Lee Chess is more fun and less serious. <laughs> At least in terms of that variant. People just really like moving fast. It's very addictive. Um, but I'd like to think and hope that the improvements to Stockfish for are the additions of King of the Hill and for three check chess, I'd like to think in some way that those have brought up the standard for how people think about King of the Hill 
how people think about three check and they're able to see their mistakes if they just put in the time and effort to study their own games. Um, and then maybe beyond mistakes they'll learn some things about strategy and tactics. Although Stockfish is not especially good at teaching strategy. Okay, so where are we here? I've successfully rambled for about 45 minutes. Um, well done me. Okay, so... Let's see. Deprecated features used. Chef Gem is used in the Java SE installer. Um, okay. Please set compile time false to use the new behavior at this location. Okay. Uh, use compile time true if compile time behavior is required. What does this mean? I do not understand. We're using deprecated features. Um, I guess what this is telling me is that um, if I set a value compile time false, then I'll use the new behavior, which is not to compile, not to update at compile time. I actually like that idea. I read up the documentation earlier and it suggests that um, uh, based on the value of this compile time attribute, and I don't know where to set this, but if you set this to false, um, you do have the benefit that your Java doesn't change while you're trying to compile things. And that sounds reasonable to me. I honestly don't care too much one way or the other because I'm using Java 8 and I'm not using Java 9 and I'm pretty sure Oracle's Java 8 is going to be stable so it doesn't matter whether I'm using 8.1.2 or 8.1.3 or I forget what versions of 8 have been released thus far but um, I'm pretty sure that any version of 8 will be good enough for what I'm trying to do. So, yeah. So, we've prepared to get ready for preparing for starting to develop this. Um, let me now try to log in. Is there anything else I need to keep track of here? Um, do, am I missing anything? I know over the last... 45 minutes I ran, rambled and ranted about things that were missing. Yeah, so I need to search for, where is it, get revert. <laughs> okay, well, it's a shame that this is going to get streamed, but eh, whatever. Um, so... Yeah. Oh well. This can't be helped. And it's not like somebody would want... Yeah. People would never be able to find this video uh, or this stream or this content and uh, even if they did find this it's probably going to be out of date by the time they try to start using it. But yeah, I'm going to make a change that defeats the CAPTCHA system because um, that change, uh, having the reCAPTCHA system requires me to do additional things to register with third parties and I don't need that at the moment. Um, so we're going to log in to the guest virtual machine or operating system. Uh, so we use Vagrant SSH. 
Um, we're gonna change user to Leela. Uh, oh. <laughs> I remember the other thing here. Um, so we gotta change directory to Leela. Uh, git remote lists all. Okay, that's not what I meant to do. Git branch list. Um, okay, so we're gonna create a new branch. Um, I think that's the right command. Uh, man git checkout. Git checkout, I think it's dash b branch name. Yes. Okay. Git branch, no, git checkout. B no capped cha. Okay. Are you kidding me? Somebody's updated. Uh, public Staunton. That, somebody's been changing things in the duration that it's taken me to install this. I don't care. We're going ahead. Um, so we got this command, this git revert. Uh, right. And what this is observing is that to undo that particular commit, um, I have to deal with the fact that more recent changes have been made in the same files. Uh, so, what I have to do is resolve these compile errors. Uh, what's this? Why is public Staunton deleted? I don't understand that. I do not intend to commit that, but, um, so yeah, I just have to deal with the fact that I'm getting some compilation errors here, uh, or some merge conflicts, rather, which earlier today I went through the steps of resolving, and I'll do so again here. Uh, what was that? This was the, oh, I don't need that. Um, that's cool. Uh, so I'm just reconciling changes that have been made um, throughout the last n months. Um, so for example, more recently, uh, this is the more recent code down here where um, just this is the value acceptable unique email. The old value was acceptable unique email function that takes a argument of none. Uh, how did I resolve this earlier today? Um, so I think I got rid of this because we're not using a captcha. Um, and also, yeah, I got rid of the verifier down here. So, so we're just using the standard leeches captcha rather than, which is the find the checkmate thing, rather than using a third party captcha service. Um, yeah. So, made that change. Uh, and we have to go to file number three. Here's another merge conflict. Um, yeah, I think I'm able to just use this here. I don't need this reCAPTCHA, which is just some old development or an initial prototype that's not needed. Uh, Clarify. There's no reCAPTCHA anywhere else in this file. I'm gonna add that, and now I'm gonna look over my chat window and see that people have been talking. Um. So, yeah, I'll try to keep people posted on how things are going. <laughs> um. 
Yeah, T Pow is awesome. I've seen a couple of his videos. I'm pretty sure he would beat me in like five moves in Atomic. He's pretty good. Um, okay. So we're gonna finish. Um, finish this step. Oh, right. And bear with me one second here. It wants my uh, name and my email address. Um, don't feel like publishing that in this video. So I'm going to switch off the stream for just one second. All right. Bear with me. Git config global. Uh, so that email, my email address, uh, user.name, more concerned about the email address than anything else. Um, So, let me put the stream back on. Oh, let me try that again. Uh, there we go. We're going to continue. Um, cool. Alright. So now, let's try running... Um, yeah, this will work-ish. Uh, that doesn't look right. No, that's not right. That should be trying to allocate much more memory than what's been indicated there. Um, Okay, something did not get set up properly in my profile. Um, I don't think there's anything sensitive in my profile, but let me go check. Um, no, there's nothing sensitive here. Let me copy the lines out of my other environment. Which does contain sensitive stuff. Okay. Um, so just so you can see, here we are back here again. I'm inserting two lines of code. Let's say, use some arguments to try to do more advanced Java stuff, and increase the memory allocation, and run LeechS on port 9663. Um, now we're going to try running it again. Uh, again, I goofed. We have to include or use those settings which will be used each time we log in from now on. Um, I'm not sure why my installation script uh, failed in that regard. You know, I'm willing to bet that one other thing's going to fail here. bet it's going to fail. Um, we'll see, we'll see. Okay, so LeechS is up and running. However, it's probably using the wrong name. Um, 
So I'm going to verify what name it's running with. Uh, yeah, this also failed to get set correctly, so I have to go fix that. Um, also, I've got to change my stream settings to capture what's going to now look like a Leeches stream. So, so far we've been just focused on the development to set up the environment under which Leeches will run. Now I'm going to switch over and run this as Leeches on my private server, not revealing all my host name and IP and all that stuff. So. Be back in a couple minutes. Alright, see you then.